Makita batteries have an issue that needs addressing. Due to the internal electronics design and battery usage habits, the battery eventually reaches a point where it stops charging and provides no more power. Makita produces two types of protection boards, ranging from the most advanced with the comprehensive protections and self-balancing features, to the most compact where some features are omitted. As batteries go through a normal applications, being charged and discharged 10 or hundreds of times, they age, get well used, and may potentially become unbalanced without proper supervision. If your Makita battery has a protection board like this, you should be just fine. All cells will be monitored through separate battery balancing connections, ensuring equal balance during each battery charge. However, if the protection board fails, you may be interested in the solution I will demonstrate in the second half of the video. A completely different scenario unfolds with this type of protection board. It lacks balancing connections to all battery groups connected in series, which may cause cells to unbalance, triggering the circuit board and making the battery unusable. To prevent potential issues, I will add a GST5S cells balancing port. With this, I can check the charge state of cells and balance them during battery charging, if needed. It fits nicely here, but I need to make a small window in the top cover. There are various tool options to do the job, but the hand jigsaw seems the simplest. I finish the opening with a few passes of a metal file. Before moving on, I prepared the GST connector by soldering the wires and bending the contacts to ensure enough clearance to the board. Despite that clearance, I added an extra safety layer by using Captain Tape. The battery top cover was used as a guide and a screwdriver served as a flat reference to the surface. With a few drops of CA glue, I fixed the connector in place. As you can see, there is plenty of space until the PCB board. Next, I need to shorten and solder balance wires to the corresponding cell groups. Now, all those balance wires represent the same balancing tabs on this battery. I mixed 5 minutes epoxy to bond the GSC connector to the board permanently. At the same time, epoxy serves as an electrical insulator. I reassembled the battery without any issues, because all newly added components were carefully placed in the free space of the battery case. To balance the battery, I'll use this 5S GST male balance wire. One end goes to the battery balance connector, while the other will be connected to the multifunctional balancing device called cell meter 8. You will find a link in the video description of this device. By pressing the type button, we could choose the type of battery we are inspecting. In our case, we are working with lithium ion, but in general, we could leave the setting at LiPo 2. It does not have any impact on the balancing feature. The cell meter detected all five cell groups connected in series. And by pressing the cell button, we can see the state of charge for every cell group. This small device can work as a battery voltage capacity checker slash balance discharger. I will use this discharge feature by pressing mode discharge button. One press enables the discharge feature and the second press initiates the discharge from the maximum to the minimum of cell voltages. The meter will discharge all blinking cells to equalize the voltage to the lowest state of charge cell group. In my case, it is the fifth group of cells with 4.07 volts. When the balancing is finished, I put the battery on the charger to fully charge it. Let's check how the cell balance looks after discharge. Well, I could call that well-balanced battery. Okay, this works very nicely, but you may ask, what if I would like to charge and balance the battery at the same time? 
Here is my answer. A charging adapter which I designed and 3D printed. It allows you to charge and connect the balancing wires simultaneously. I leave a link to the printable file in the video description along with all the other used components. A quick heads up, this method allows Makita batteries to be charged even when their internal electronics are broken and the Makita charger isn't accepting them. You will see this in more detail at the end of the video. For the terminals, I'll use spade male connectors. Before using the adapter, I need to place charging terminals and manage the wires. To make them work, the spade terminal should be slightly modified to look like this. When the wire is soldered to the terminal, I press them into the adapter slot. The fitment is quite tight, but with small pliers, it isn't as difficult. The adapter has a design groove and small clips that will hold wire in place. With a few drops of 5 minutes epoxy, I glued and sealed the open space over the installed terminals. I soldered the left wire ends to the DEANS type connector. So the adapter is assembled. Let's test it. It clicks and fits perfectly. The open window allows balance wire to be connected. To charge, I'll use a smart balance charger called Amax B6. This or similar ones are often used in the RC world. In general, any smart LiPo charger will work, but I have this on the shelf, so let's connect the battery. To charge, I select LiPo mode. Trust me, it is entirely fine for 18650 cells which are inside this battery. Then I select the LiPo balance charge feature. I adjusted the maximum charge current all the way up. Next, I select battery type 5S because those Makita batteries has 5 cell groups connected in series. By pressing enter, I confirm the settings and a second press will start the charge. The charger will adjust how much the current to use regarding the state of the battery charge. Here, we can check how all individual cells look during the process. At the moment, they are out of balance, but at the end of the charge, they will be nicely balanced. This charging adapter can be used without a balancing feature and will work just fine. It will be the same as placing the battery on the original Makita charger. But because we have a balance port on the battery, let's plug it back and check how it goes. A bit later, the battery was fully charged and cell groups were well balanced. This balance port is a very cheap and easy modification for the battery. It doesn't limit any use case for the tools or even using the original charger. At the same time, all these small parts will expand the possibilities of charging, balancing and properly maintaining your batteries to extend their maximum performance and lifespan. Thank you for your support by subscribing to the channel. Leave a comment or just hit the like icon if this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.